All right, back again here today. Now, um, I've this is what the third video I think I'm putting up in this little series. So what I've done since the last two is I rewired this uh, because I couldn't get a reading out of one of the things. I rewired this uh, little plug here. Um, but in particular, there was a patch lead that was necessary. And so the way this unit works, the Innovate DLG1, I gave them a ring and they, they talked me through it. Really nice people. Um, one, of the, one of the sensors goes straight into this device. The other goes into this device here, which is called the LC2, first through its lead and then through to this uh, meter. And that one wasn't hooked up. That one requires a separate patch lead into it. And so I sorted all that out, fixed that wire, uh, put it all back together, and I wired it up a little bit differently here on the bike. So I've attached it all to the cross strut here. Uh, so nothing, they're you know, quite separate now, these two things. And uh, I'll just show how this works. So with nothing attached, with both not connected, and on the power, which is just uh, wired into the battery, in this case, through a fuse into the switch here. And with nothing attached, we should get that. Top one is straight into the unit, the bottom one is through the LC2. Uh, in here, there's a menu you can get to, telling us what we're going to measure, air fuel ratio. AFR, and the other thing is for gasoline, which is 14.7, the stoichiometric ratio, 14.64, um, I understand. Anything below that is rich, anything above that is lean. Um, you have to choose what's best for your bike by how you ride and how it runs, but we're going to be somewhere, I don't know, between 11 and 13, that sort of area. Depending on what we're doing, we'll find out. I mean, this is all new, so we're going to see what happens. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is hook up the, turn that off, hook up the sensors, and they're now sitting on the ground here, like that, because they're going to get a calibration. So I'll plug these in, and then we'll turn it on again and uh, calibrate them. Okay, back again. I've now plugged in the uh, two sensors, and just to go over this in case anyone's looking at this in future. Calibration procedure is here. Sensor calibration. Anytime a new sensor is installed, well these aren't new, um, but after a number of months. And certainly, in particular, the point that matters is you can disconnect and reconnect the sensor and the sensor cable from the units, but if you power this up without a sensor connected, the calibration gets reset. So, yes, you know, in order to turn it on and get the E2 and all that, we have to power it up without the uh, sensors attached, so therefore it needs to be redone. Uh, all you have to do is have it powered on for 30 seconds, which we did before. Then we powered it down, attach the sensors, make sure their sensors are fully seated and locked. It's got these special sort of connectors that look like that. And... Uh, make sure the sensors are in free air and not in the exhaust. And they heat up, so I've got them sitting on the concrete like that. So they can just sit there like that. We're going to turn it on. They're going to warm up. Here we go. A heater, B heater, and then they'll flash cal, calibrating after a bit. And then when that's done, we can turn it off and not disconnect them. Hang on. There's a problem with that because in order to screw them into the, um, see the top one's calibrated, 22.4 AFR, I guess that's plain air. Okay, so now we'll turn it off. Now the problem with that is that in order to install the sensors, uh, you can disconnect and reconnect the cable without losing calibration, but don't turn it on. That's all. 
So now I'm going to disconnect them because in order to plug them, you know, screw them in here, they've got to be detached. Otherwise the cables are all going to get all wound up. So I'll do that and then I'll cable tie all this tidily again. And then we should be ready to go. Okay. Bye-bye. This is me leaning over. Hopefully we can see this, that, and the instruments. That's off. That's off. I'll get this thing started and we're going to go out. Just going to go up the hill, warm it up. Ah, then go on a ride around the coast, I guess, and we're just going to try and see what happens. I'm going to drive it at, ride it at different throttle settings. The main one I'm interested in is right there, and then winding it on a bit. I mean, it runs well everywhere else, so I'm just going to concentrate on that, but we'll see what happens on the instruments. We're looking for 14.7 is perfect, uh, but that's not where you actually run bikes. It might be somewhere 12, 13 that we're aiming for. Um, six, seven, eight, nine is too low. Over 14 is over 14.7 is too high. So I understand. And we're kind of looking for the instruments here to sort of be um, in the right range up around there, where those lines are. Front, rear. Now here it's the A channel is the lower, the front cylinder. The B channel is the rear. So the top row. Oh, we'll see which one I forget. A, A is front, B is rear. Okay, let's go. Put this in my pocket. And let's get it started. Okay. Okay, chokes on, fuels on. Ah, that on. Turn the lights off for this, just while I get it started. And here we go. Hasn't been run for a couple of weeks. So let's see what happens. And I'm running the Jets are 65 idle, 140 and 145 on the mains. Needle is K4 middle slot. And the rest of the jets are all standard. Here we go. Oof. Headers. It sounds very different. Turn the lights on. Turn the uh, turn the gauge on. Heater, heater. Don't know why it needs the heater part. That's how it's meant to be, or what? Still on heater. Still on heater. Top one's 11.3. Oh, yeah, there we go. God, it sounds terrible. because the exhaust is not tight. So it's a bit loud. Oh, it's pretty balanced though. 10, 8, 10, 9. I'm going to turn the temperature on. The temperature's on. Needles go up, go down, and then they go up. Oh, look at that. About 50, uh, 54, 55. Watch I don't get uh, distracted. The sound of the exhaust is terrible. So 10A, 10.6. This is with the throttle. So it looks like this position is uh, halfway 
between the second and third mark, which is often where it is when I'm riding. If I go up to the first mark, that's there, 10-6, 10-5. We thought it ran rich, we can see it. It certainly is. Ten six. Temperatures climbing. If this is hundreds, which I think it's meant to be. Yes it is, times a hundred degrees centigrade. So the temperature is six hundred degrees in both. The front one is slightly hotter. Barely though. Okay, I'm just gonna watch the road here. I'll tell you what, the uh, AFR is pretty consistent. 10, 10 to 11. Slide. All right. Just about 12, hovering on 12 for the top front cylinder, 11 and a half for the bottom. So the bottom on idle is a little bit um, lean. The uh, bottom is richer, which is sorry, the top cylinder is richer at idle. Now if I go. I don't know if this is visible on the GoPro. So that's at idle. Goes to, well actually pretty much stays there. It's 11. Yeah, stays in that range. About 12. Average is about 12 with the uh, front cylinder a bit richer. It'll be at this point here, when I've got it idling like this, it'll be the idle mixture screw that's uh, affecting that. However, I'm finding that it's the A cylinder is a little bit richer all the way through. Now it's almost 1, like 12.4, and the bottom is 11.6 or so. So in that case, you know, it may be the case that tweaking the bottom one, the back cylinder, I could bring it up to the same, like 11. Yeah, I mean, I might see what that does when I get on the flat, see if that's the case. So right now the front cylinder is 500 degrees, sorry, the rear, the top is 500, the bottom is uh, only 300, so that's interesting. So again, the front, the left, is the top, the right is the bottom. So the rich, the leaner one is cooler, which is, I'm uh, pretty sure that's not normally the case. Okay, they're both, they're both going up. Let's uh, take off again and see what happens. Go. So this is uh, second gear, 
3500 RPM Eleven and a half, it's a bit hesitant here It's hesitant It feels like it's hunting a bit, but 10, they're, they're matched actually, 10.1, 10.2 And I'm going to wind it on Oh, and it went rich Okay I'm going to go up the gear, do the same 10.8, 10.1 Top one's a little bit leaner And now 2500 RPM Wind it on Okay, it goes very rich Even then, the maximum, it went lean when I throttled it, so it went up to 13 and a half or so. That's interesting. God, this tunnel is dreadful. Ten six, ten six. Yeah, the top one drops to nine. The bottom one doesn't. I noticed that in the last three or four times I did that. I can see the top one go to nine something, and the bottom one stays on ten something. Like right now, top is eleven, bottom is ten, and then oh, they both matched that time. They both went to ten and nine. Exactly the same time. Yeah, the top one is less stable. Jumps around a bit more, I think. I'm going to do it at a higher RPM. People. Okay, what do we got? pipe is over 600 front pipe is uh, 600 650 to 600 difference 50 degrees difference okay it's hunting a bit and when I crack it on it goes rich which is what you'd expect but would that cause it to sort of uh, feel a bit anemic go down as much as nine. I'll bring it on and then I'll let it settle at that speed. I get the impression it's uh, consistent around ten and a half to eleven whenever I'm riding at a constant speed regardless of the uh, RPM and the throttle. Tell you what, that particular spot where I'm, I'm looking for where that flat spot is, I'm not seeing that on the meters. All I'm seeing is that it goes richer, which you expect when you go on the throttle a little bit. And so, yes, that's correct. Going as low as nine point something, is that the problem? Maybe it's just too rich overall. Okay, now we can see the meter. It's 10.5 roughly. 10.5. And now go on the gas and it hesitated. Yeah, I mean it did it. I don't think it was clear on the uh, instrumentation that that was any kind of fault. in the temperature, it's hunting a bit, 10.3, 10.5, gas, A channel goes a bit richer than the other, and 
and even then on the uh, with no throttle it's uh i think i'll go up and over the hill but look at all that fucking traffic oh. Uh, now I'll go around. Uh, I'll go around. Excuse my language. something just then. I'm going to 
try that very rich. Oh boy. <laughs> I saw the top even go to um, 18. That's interesting. Yeah, shouldn't we be seeing it go uh, richer? So I went up to top gear to throttle it. Accelerator pump should have, would, have, would have come in. And yet, I'm pretty sure I saw the top go to 18. The bottom leg behind it. So I don't know how that works. I don't know if that's normal or not. just over just over 500 it's 200 degrees difference and uh, the A is the one on the left so that's leaner 200 degrees difference and about 0.8 or so on average leaner if I just come on a bit Point eight, point nine difference, and the upper is getting hotter, quicker. Let us go up a little bit. And now, oh, it's hard to say. <laughs> oh well, let's put it off. <laughs> 